say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen, where the farmers and that's our kitchen right over there. So when you see us cooking over there, if we get really tired. We come sit. We come sit. Nikki's making me work so hard that's that right. I can't hardly stand up. She makes <laughs> me come over here. You know what? Another year has passed us by. Has yes, flown it is. by. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a look back like most shows do. And we're not different in that respect. But one of the things that, that really thrilled me about this year didn't happen this year. But we went way back, and I have to thank the Kentucky Field staff, where I used to work as host. I was with the department almost 30 years. Wow. How can that be? I don't when know. I'm only 40 years old? It's impossible. I don't know. Possible. They found something dating back 25 years. That's neat. It's just so cool. You hear me talk about the fellow that really taught me about how good food could be. Now, Mom was a classic country chef. Oh, That's the right. chow chows and the biscuits. Oh yeah. And the, you know, even the, even the things like a lot of people don't like the liver and onions. She Yummy. made the best liver and onions. And I remember chili nights. She made great chili. She made good country food, good mm -hmm. fried chicken, good green beans. Everything she did was amazing. But when I joined the Marine Corps and got out in the world, first place I was stationed was in Memphis, Millington Naval Air Base, and the restaurants around there were really good. And I started. I went to my first Chinese restaurant. Then I went to a really good Italian restaurant, and who knew that someday I would accidentally meet a French chef. His daughter lived right next door. This man had the most amazing life. And I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna go way back. I am so glad I found it this year. You hear me talk about him all the time. Here he is, my friend, my forever friend. Right. He's gone, but he's still with me every day. Raoul Dupree. Last year I met the most amazing person. His name is Raoul Dupre. He's traveled the world on scientific expeditions with the French government. He's a world-renowned chef and he's a sportsman extraordinaire. Meet my friend Raoul Dupre. I'm sure you've heard that old saying that if you make one good friend in life, you're very fortunate. Now, I found that friend in a very unlikely way. My friend is Raoul Dupre, and he's from Lyon, France. I met him two years ago when he came to visit my close friend and neighbor, Yvette, his daughter. Yvette came to the United States in 1970 and has made the U.S. her new home. Now, as you can see, we have a lot in common. Now here comes the hard part. I gotta try to squeeze his 10 lifetimes into 10 minutes. At 14, Raoul was an apprentice in a pastry shop in Paris. He later became a chef. But in 1949, when a friend told him a chef was needed for an expedition, Raoul applied and was hired as chef for the French polar expedition from 1950 through 1952. This expedition was launched by the French government and would take the crew to the North and South Poles in Greenland. The scientists aboard would study, among other things, the ozone layer, weather, and other related studies.
Adapting to this harsh and unforgiving environment was no easy task, according to Raoul. During his stay, they would often hunt seal for food. Their hide was used to make boots. Nothing went to waste. Another challenge was becoming used to darkness for months at a time. Raoul told me that at times the men were so depressed that they wouldn't talk for days. One night there was a fire in part of their encampment. All they could do is stand back and watch their valuable supplies go up in smoke. Well, you always got to have some time to play, and occasionally there was time for a snowball fight. Now here, during a celebration, Raoul bakes a cake that's a model of their camp. It's very hard for me to recollect my earliest memory of Dad. I have so many wonderful memories of him. I always question him about his life and experiences such as life in Paris during the German occupation and what he went through to survive and fight for freedom. However, what attracted me the most are his story of his trips around the world, his stay in Greenland and South Pole. After his return, we left for Morocco, where we stayed for about 15 years. He was hired as a chef in a wonderful four-star restaurant in Casablanca on the Atlantic Ocean. He was fully responsible for the restaurant and the public pool. After about two years in Morocco, his love for archery began. He is now 77 years old, back in France, and still very much involved in competitive archery. Now, Raoul and I have a tiny bit of a language barrier, but we always seem to understand each other. And Raoul and I are going back out in the woods. I, I tagged out during muzzleloader, so that's the reason I'm not in camouflage today, but uh, going back out, we got a good spot where we know some deer are coming by. Raoul's got two days left to hunt. Um, Raoul, it's good to have Vu in America. Um, thank you. Thank you for uh, chasse with moi. Yes. Ah. C'est avec un, un grand plaisir. <laughs> Et toute ma vie, je me souviendrai de ce moment. And uh, you come back. My life. Huh? You, you come back. You come back next year. Uh, chasse, chasse again. Uh, possible. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. Maybe I'll come. Maybe uh, uh, moi come to France to chasse with the Raoul. Yes. We'll go to Morocco and yes. have a record. So you send my, uh, I don't know how to say it, I do Send my fish, my, my, my boy. Oh, OK. <laughs> I'm your son. You send my boy. That's good, that's good. Uh, so maybe, maybe Kentucky and Phil will go to Morocco and hunt peccary. Well, don't count on it, but it could happen. Let's go. On y va? On y va. On y va. Let's go. <laughs> Well, we went from the woods to the kitchen where Raoul fixed some wonderful venison. He fixed a bouillon sauce with wine and he poured it over the venison. It was the most wonderful thing I had ever put in my mouth. As I took Raoul for drives through the country, and he noticed all the deer in Turkey, all the wild game in Kentucky, he told me in France that it was nothing like this, that uh, they hardly ever got to hunt, ever saw any game. Made me realize just how fortunate we are.
I also feel very fortunate to have met Raoul. We stay in contact and one day I hope to visit him in his native France. I am very proud to call Raoul mon ami, my friend. All right, this year we're going to travel more. We're yeah. going to get back out and we're going to start traveling and you say where and we'll go. Really? Where do you want to go? Hawaii. <laughs> we did a show from Hawaii. We did. That was fun. Let me show you just a little bit of a clip here that we did a while back. We went to, this was the Big Island. It was the Big right? Island. That's right. And we found a place right on the Pacific Ocean and we went to some local shops. There was some great, great. Korean food, some great Japanese food, mm -hmm. some great Hawaiian food. But we went to this restaurant and it was a pork recipe that we did Delicious. here. And Kelly wasn't there, so the quality of the video is not what it should hey, be. Hey, I was videoing. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> Kelly wasn't there in the quality. I'm the filling. But this was just a simple dish we did with uh, zucchini. That's good. And pork, and it was so wonderful. We did a couple of other recipes there too. So you wanna go back to Hawaii? Maybe. <laughs> One place is not that far away, but they have something special. It's called Nashville Chicken. I thought, you know, we got to figure this thing out. And you did. So we went to several restaurants, and I tried to talk to some people and get some secrets. Mm -hmm. And we came up with a Nashville chicken that I thought was pretty good. Delicious. We made a sandwich, and we put something special on it. It was delish. First of all, I have found lately that when I smoke my chicken, even a full chicken mm -hmm. on the smoker, if you do a salt brine ahead of time, it does not dry out. If you use enough salt in your chicken, then that's gonna keep it nice and moist on the smoker. And a lot of people will spatchcock that bird to open up a little bit, so that'll work better on the smoker. Not too long ago, we wanted to have a chicken sandwich that's kinda of like somebody else does out there that's a famous chicken maker. And we came pretty close, it had a dill pickle brine. Now, even if you don't like dill pickle, the flavor of a dill pickle brine, or dill pickle juice, makes chicken wonderful. Yes, it does. Then I'm going to take it, salt and pepper it, and think about the size you want for a sandwich. This beautiful piece of chicken, which has a little green tint to it, not because it's spoiled, because it's pickle juice. been in pickle juice. Now I've already got this mixed up, but I'm going to show you what I got over here. I got a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. Now if you're watching us on the show and we don't say it's self-rising, usually we're always using all-purpose. Yeah. Cup and a half. Next. We're gonna use a quarter of a cup of cornstarch. What happens when you use cornstarch with your flour when you're frying chicken? Nice and crispy. Crispy. And next, we're gonna take some dry rub. You can use Cajun seasoning. We're using our dry rub here. We're gonna use three tablespoons. I wanna season it up. If you want to, if you really wanna bump everything up, you can put some cayenne pepper in your flour itself. If you wanna keep- Let's keep it normal. Keep things going. You can in your seasoned flour. Now I've got, three tablespoons, but you can put a little cayenne pepper, some garlic, chili powder, whatever you want to do. In this one, I put just a little bit of cayenne. Thank you. Just a tiny bit. And again, this is just for the batter. So one thing that I have been doing here lately is using olive oil to deep fry. Mm -hmm. And I've used it over and over again because I have not nearly gotten anywhere close to the smoke point. If you remember and I've said this a million times, but if you talk about the old days and when grandma was cooking her fried chicken, she didn't throw it in a vat of 400 degree oil and, right. and cook it for, you know, three minutes on each side. She put it in there and let it slow cook. On her stove, slow. On her stove, slow. And a lot of times, remember the electric skillets that mm -hmm. were so popular? Yes. In the 50s and 60s. All right, so I'm gonna take just flour, just flour to begin with, into some buttermilk and egg. Now something we really need to do here, you need to make sure that every square inch, every square inch, you don't want any dry spots, is covered on here. Because we want every square inch of this to have wonderful flaky goodness. Now we're gonna go into the seasoned batter. And another thing that we wanna do here is no empty spots. Make sure that you have every place covered. Now here's the part that's gonna shock you. On a lot of shows, they're gonna say, have your oil at 375. Three minutes on each side, four minutes on each side, whatever. No, that's not what we're gonna do. We're staying way away from the smoke point and we're gonna let this cook and it's gonna cook fast enough. This piece of chicken, as thin as it is, 
if we're cooking this at about 275, yep, that's what we said, 275. And wait till you see how beautiful this comes out. If we're cooking this at 275, it's gonna take it about 17 minutes. And it's not going crazy. There's not oil flying everywhere. You can see what happens. We are right now at about 273. I'm gonna dip that in there and just let it fall. You see that's turning over nicely. Looks good. In a minute, I'm gonna make sure that doesn't stick to the bottom. I'm gonna loosen right. that up and let that float up. This chicken will almost tell you when it's done. It'll have a golden brown look. The severity of the oil movement through the chicken will lighten. You'll see less yeah. bubbles coming. It'll kind of float up. It says eat me, eat me. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's what it says. I heard I, it. I heard it too. So I'm gonna loosen that up and make sure that floats up. All right, let's check this out over here. Now look at that. It's all staying together. Everything's staying on there. It's, it's not, not frying so rapidly that everything's coming apart. Looks good. And when it's done, and I think I'll let this go for around 17 minutes max. So we're gonna come up with about a quarter cup. Might be a little over. Remember, this is olive oil. Yummy. Olive oil. So you can't feel too bad about That's that. That's right, you can't. Hand me the most important ingredient. When you think about Nashville chicken, I'm not gonna smell it. Yeah, you know it smells make like. sneeze. Normally, if it wasn't for you, Kelly can handle some heat. I would put... The whole bottle. I would probably put three, three and a half to, for you tonight. Yes. I'm gonna put... How much? see that. I'm gonna probably go... This is a tablespoon. I'm gonna probably go... Now, hear that chicken dying down in the background? You hear that? It's getting ready. One. Uh-oh, you're going more. I'm gonna go about one. That's about two. No. That's, two? that's about right. All right. Let's go a heaping teaspoon of chili powder. That's what, that I, that's what I tasted last time I had it. Now, some Nashville chicken is just pure hot. Mm -hmm. Some of it has sweet. I like a little bit of sweet. So I'm gonna say let's put a tablespoon and a half, at least brown sugar in there. It may seem like a lot, but let's mix that butter up in there. We're gonna take a little bit of garlic. Let's go a half a teaspoon. Let's take a half a tablespoon of smoked paprika. I'm kind of back on my smoked paprika kick. Have you noticed? I've noticed. But I'm still on the fennel kick, too. You have salt? How much salt would you like? Now, we're going to go a three-quarter tablespoon of salt in here. If you have restrictions on salt, call your doctor. And then we're going to come back with one and a half teaspoon of my dry rub, and we're going to let that thicken up. Now, you think that sounds like a lot of cayenne, but really comes together nicely. It has more of a smoky flavor. Now, you get some heat, but if you put double that, I'd be you on fire. really get some heat. I'd be on fire. All right, so now listen. Listen to how that's really died down. You hear that? And it's been 17 minutes? It's been about 17 minutes. Okay. Now I want you to wow. look at this. Oh, that looks good. That's a huge, that grew, it got bigger. <laughs> I think it got bigger piece of chicken. So now you think about a sandwich, that's about what we want for wow. sandwich. Look at that piece of, look at both sides of it. Wow. Have you ever seen a more perfect, beautiful piece of chicken? No, I have not. So as I'm tasting along here, I want a little more sweet, so I'm gonna put another half tablespoon of brown sugar into my mix. Kill the hot a little. It'll kill the hot, but you don't want to kill it too much. Now, this is to me a nice, warm flavor. It's mm -hmm. not overpowering. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try it, though. <laughs> I mean, like out of this dish, you probably kill it. Some people don't like hot stuff. And again, if you wanted to go, if you really wanted hardly any hot taste, but you wanted kind of yeah. the Nashville chicken experience, yeah. maybe go one tablespoon. And that's hardly any heat at all. Believe it or not, when you cook it down like this, it takes that heat out of it. Now again, when you look at that piece of chicken right there, look how evenly done that is all the way across. That's perfect. That is a beautiful piece of chicken. It's crispy, the oil has drained out, and that is gonna make a wonderful sandwich. That's what it's supposed to look like. Glistening chicken. Glistening hot chicken. We went to Tennessee to a school of cooking. Yes. And that was so much fun. Yes, it was. I mean, tomato pie, and we're gonna, let's just go back there and say maybe in April. Good idea. And let's find out how to make a slap your face. It's so good tomato pie. Can you dig it? I can. Tomato pie. I'm still very excited about the tomato pie. Is there any way you would show us how you built that? Yes. From the ground up? Yes, from the ground up. Well, when I make my tomato pie, I make it in a cast iron skillet. Today, I'm gonna use yellow and red tomatoes because we want it to be colorful 
And because tomatoes are really... Um, Drippy? Yes. <laughs> we want to go ahead and prepare um, and slice these, put a little salt on them to draw out the moisture, and then um, what we'll do is we're going to let those uh, tomatoes sit while we're making our dough, and then they'll be prepared. Now one thing I like to do, because I hate cleaning up messes, I just, I just get me a little parchment paper. My grandmother used to say, if you don't make a mess, you don't have to clean it up. Oh, isn't that the truth? So I have prepared the dough in advance. Of course, it's best to chill it for a couple of hours. So I just, it's a very simple recipe with plain flour, a little salt, a little butter, and a little lard. Is it chunks of butter and lard? Chunks of butter oh. and lard in here. So you want to lightly flour your, your dough. It's been sitting in the fridge, so you want it to, you'll want to get it really, I like my crust thin and crispy. Now you want to try to keep your crust even as possible. So um, you see that's kind of uneven, that's okay. And what I like to do is just kind of fold it over so I don't tear it. I'll just quarter it here and get my pan ready. Let's see what you're doing, that was tricky. So you just want it to be gently, and you just place it how you want in your pan. Now remember, you know, we're talking Appalachian food, so sometimes just the rough look is, is okay, oh, yeah. you know. I'll just go around, and you see I have some more. We'll trim that off. But I just go around and kind of just roughly pinch. My grandma could just take her hand mm -hmm. and go just Seen with it. one hand and pinch it as fast as she, as she could, and they were always just right in unison. So this is my dough. Now, I'm gonna put this in the oven for just 10 minutes on 375, just to let that bake just a little bit. You're not gonna need to poke holes or have anything in it, because it's not gonna rise up. It's just gonna give a, a little firmness to it. So we've given our crust about 10 minutes in the oven, and you see, still see there's not much going on. So we're gonna start our layering process. Back to our tomatoes. You see the moisture on top of those? Mm -hmm. We're going to take our paper towel and dab it. Kind of dab it up there. So we're going to start just layering around these tomatoes. You'll start with the tomatoes first. Kind of, since we're doing both colors, we'll alternate. So we're, I'm taking a cup of shredded sharp cheddar, a half a cup of mozzarella shredded and a half a cup of Monterey Jack. I like to mix my cheeses and one cup of mayonnaise. Oh, gotta have mayonnaise. So, and then a little salt and pepper to taste. Okay, so once you get all of that, you're just gonna do a little layer. Put half of your cheese on your tomato pie. Just kinda spread it around there. You're kinda gauging as you go yeah, along. Yeah, just kinda you're... gauging how much you want. You want the top layer for me to be good and thick with cheese. And then I have a half a cup of green onions that I've just diced up. Just add a little color, a little flavor. And then now we'll take our tomatoes, go back to layering. Now because I'm starving, the question I'm gonna have, Yeah. how long does it take to cook? It cooks for 35 minutes. At what temperature? At 350. You just You've set already your, got some heat in the bottom. That's right, and you, and you set your um, timer for 35 minutes and you're you're good to go. Oh man, that's so good. it's okay to have a little bit of the tomato peeking out. Yeah. So 350, 35 minutes. Yeah. It's country. Yeah. And it's good. So we wish you a happy new year and lots of good cooking and mm -hmm. recipes and such. And Mrs. Farmer. Yes. If you were shopping. I love to shop. I know you do. And they came up to you and said, I love that recipe. Mm -hmm. Where can I find it? Where would you tell them to go? I say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And also, we talk to a bunch of people. We share ideas and recipes. How do you become a part of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page? You hit like. You hit like. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything to say? It's all about? Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you uh, next year on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. <laughs>
We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub.